Welcome, everyone. I'm Larry Platt, co-founder of The Citizen. Uh, I pledge to you that you will be out of here to watch the Phillies kick ass tonight. Yeah. Um, and before we get to honoring our uh, 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 winners tonight, the, the, the great citizens among us, uh, we thought we'd have a little chat about what integrity really means. I have one more plug to the many that, that Roxanne uh, uh, put forth and involves Mayor Nutter. We started about six months ago, maybe, doing this podcast called uh, How to Really Run a City. Mayor Nutter and former Atlanta Mayor Kasim Reed, great chemistry between these two guys. In fact, in the, in the next one, which you, you couldn't make, Mayor Reed uh, suggests that you're uh, on the Mediterranean sunning yourself, uh, which was not the case. It's just so wrong. <laughs> uh, but what we're doing each, each uh, and we're hoping to do this every other week, um, we're picking up the pace. We're talking to other leaders in other cities and dissecting what it means to be a practical problem solver. What we, what we like to say is there are three political parties in America. Uh, Democrats, Republicans, and mayors who have no choice but to be uh, practical problem solvers. And, and al along those lines, let me introduce uh, former Mayor Michael Nutter. Uh, for those of you who have been living under a rock, he was the mayor of Philadelphia from 2006 to 2000, uh, 2008 to 2016, uh, presided over a 60-year low in homicide rates, a growth in population, especially among millennials. I believe we were the number one destination for millennials in the nation uh, during Mayor Nutter's mayoralty. Increased high school graduation and college degree attainment rates, the adding of hundreds of miles of bike lanes and trails and launched the first low income bike friendly uh, share, bike share system in America. $11 billion in economic development projects in the last two can years. You, can you just play the video? And yeah, you'll be accepting my nomination momentarily. Um, but perhaps what Mayor Nutter is best known for is the return of ethical government. Uh, and that's why we thought uh, engaging him in this conversation was was really critical. As Drexel Professor Richardson Dilworth points out in his recent book, Philadelphia has two modern political reform eras, one led by the professor's legendary grandfather in the 1950s, and the other uh, led by Mayor Nutter uh, in the, in the mid-aughts. Um, uh, some of the calcified processes of insider government were opened up, and I want to talk about that. Um, uh, so let's get into it. Welcome, Mayor Nutter. Uh, good to see you, Larry. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, thank you. Exciting to be here. Uh, let's begin by, let me ask you this. It's an odd question. What is on the back of your business card? Um, so when I was, uh, when I was in office uh, and on my, on my Columbia card, uh, is the Athenian oath. Um, this is uh, this is the oath that obviously many 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 centuries ago, uh, young Athenians um, had to take to ultimately become citizens of Athens. And I use that um, as a reminder. Uh, if you read the Athenian oath, uh, um, it's just powerful. But it it at the end talks about uh, the requirement to uh, leave the city um, better than you found it. Um, and that was a, that was a driving force uh, for me. And so I had to print it on the back of my business cards. Uh, it, it caused a little bit of uh, consternation at the city of Philadelphia print shop. Uh, <laughs> not because of the Athenian oath. They just weren't used to printing anything on the back of business cards. So, you know, I had to have some conversations <laughs> about that. Uh, but eventually they figured it out. So. That's, a, that's a metaphor <laughs> about just how hard it is to change government. Right. I'm like, what? On the back? What? <laughs> yeah, I want something on the back, and this is what I want. <laughs> a certain font and everything. Yeah. But I remember, I mean, I do think, 
we've talked about this, how cities kind of take on the personality of their mayors. Yeah. And it means something, I think, if you're a citizen of a city and you run into your mayor, when everyone does run into their mayor in cities, oh, right? Some and to And get, to get this thing that has that message on it. You know, I think it's... Yeah. I, um, so I have this uh, theory, belief, what I've come to surmise, not just about Philadelphia, but, you know, I talk to mayors across the country. And I think that um, cities are leave, living, breathing organisms. They have feelings, they have emotions, and the leader uh, can, to some extent, uh, affect uh, what's going on uh, with, uh, with the citizens. I knew, of course, um, that, you know, if the Eagles won on Sunday, you know, Monday was probably going to be a pretty decent day. On the other hand, uh, if they didn't, uh, Monday was going to kind of be a little fucked up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's just a little on edge and, you know, good morning. Who said it is? You know, um, you know that kind of thing. Um, you know, obviously the Phillies play more games. So, you know, it's a roller coaster uh, through the week. I mean, happy on Monday, pissed off on Wednesday. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen on Friday. But, you know, more to the point, I understood that when the police officers came to pick me up at the house every morning and would bring me to bring me to city hall i understood that the moment i stepped out of the car that people were watching and they're watching to see your mood your attitude what um i know for a fact that my staff uh, would call the officers in the car and ask, what kind of music is he playing today? Because I played music, I never listened to the regular radio. I had, you know, CDs and then I started making my own playlists and all that. So I just, uh, all music all the time, love music. And so, so is this a disco day? Is it gospel? Are we <laughs> listening to the jazz? Is it public enemy? Like where, well, like what's, because they wanted to, know, they wanted a preview of like, what the fuck are we gonna face? Oh my goodness, your daughter is here. I'm sorry. Um, what are we gonna face uh, today when he gets to the office? So the ride between the house and city hall was their first indication of what kind of day is it's gonna be. But you step out of that car uh, at city hall. And no matter what madness I knew on the schedule, no matter what crazy meeting, no matter some person I was going to meet with who I did not want to meet with, you step out of that vehicle. It's good morning. How you doing? It's upbeat. You know, it's mayor's office only on the second floor. I'm like taking the steps two at a time. It's, you know, it's all energy all the time um, because you're trying to send a message that no matter how bad things look, Right? The mayor's upbeat, we're going to be okay, and you keep it moving. And then I would go in the office and, of course, you know, scream. <laughs> or, you know, throw a chair. Um, I never threw a chair. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, so tonight we're honoring uh, city workers who yeah. exhibit, who go above and beyond, to exhibit integrity, um, in part because the, the, shame game by itself yeah. in a city with a history of a long running history of perp walks We've had some the, challenges. the shame game is not enough no. so the idea here is to name and fame right. uh, people who are really go above and beyond yeah. what what does what is your definition of public integrity um you do the right things for the right reasons. Uh, you make the right decisions in the public interest. You, it's how you conduct yourself uh, when the public is not in the room or it's not, they're not around. Uh, there's so many decisions that you have to make, especially as, as the executive, as the mayor of any town, small, medium, or large, it doesn't matter. And, you know, I think as I, talk to other mayors, I, I try to help them understand the public will listen to what you say and they will watch what you do. And what they're looking for, is there any difference? Is there any light? Is there any space between those two things? 
If there is, you are dead. You will never have their trust. Um, and so um, there are a ton of decisions that get made that in many instances, not because we're hiding them, but they're just not in the public realm that you will never know about, that the executive has to make, and, but your people know. Um, and so um, we've had some challenges over time. I'll leave it at that. That's a polite way of saying that. And I was, you know, um, I've often said, somebody else said this, but if you have to choose between being lucky and smart, choose lucky every time. I got really lucky. Um, in late 2007, uh, two people were uh, retiring uh, from uh, the, uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District, uh, one of whom is here, and one we miss uh, deeply. Um, Amy Curlin is here. She is the longest serving um, city inspector general in the history of the city of Philadelphia. Amy, can you stand the up? Longest serving. Amy. Please. She might be standing up now. She, yeah. <laughs> that was the, the quickest, the quickest stand up in history. Yeah. She hates it. She <laughs> hates any kind of attention. She, you know, uh, if I could have appointed her anonymously, she would have been happy to accept that. And, um, and Joan Markman. So, um, they were both, uh, AUSAs, the Eastern district and the six of market. And they were retiring uh, pretty much at the same time in 2007. Um, I didn't know either of them, but I knew them by name and I knew Amy's dad, who had been the city solicitor. Um, but what I did know is that both of them had locked up a lot of people as uh, assistant U.S. attorneys um, here in Philadelphia. And, I, and they had locked up a lot of people who were public Public officials. Service. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 which is why they were in the paper for the most part. Um, and so I interviewed both um, for positions in the government. And, you know, it was like, um, it was like NFL draft day. I'm like, shit, I got two first round draft picks. Um, and I could possibly get both of these folks to come into the government. And so Amy was inspector general and Joan was uh, going to be the chief integrity officer, which is a brand new position in the government that I created uh, by, um, by executive order. And um, th I wanted to set a tone uh, for our administration. Um, and it could not have been set better uh, by, uh, by, by, the, by having both of them uh, in the government, and we benefited tremendously from their service. And the other thing, when did the eth did you did you write the ethics board legislation? Yeah. So you did that as a councilman, and as then a council member. and then yeah. did this when you became campaign mayor. finance reform, contract reform, um, and creating the ethics board uh, was like oh four oh five. Right. Um, uh, ethics board was a home rule charter. Uh, provision that the voters approved. Uh, so that was all in my city council days. And then, on the flip side, uh, becoming mayor, I got to appoint uh, the um, uh, inspector general, uh, which really should be an independent office, um, and the uh, chief integrity officer. And how does how does how does that manifest itself day to day when you yeah. you want to change the perception of you want to change the reality, reality. of government, but right. you also want to change yeah. the perception because there's an erosion of trust sure. between the governed and those who govern it. So sure. how does that manifest itself on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I mean, first, uh, you know, that leadership certainly has to come from the top. I tried to send that message by those appointments, um, by, you know, speeches uh, that I made. Uh, I don't remember everything I said uh, in, the, uh, in the first inaugural Address, inaugural address, uh, but I think I touched on uh, the issues of integrity and transparency and openness. Um, but it also, you know, you have to send the message down, you know, through the ranks and through the troops. So, you know, I mean, obviously all the deputy mayors, cabinet officers, I mean, they knew where I was, they wouldn't have come into the government otherwise. But, you know, it's, it's, it's deputies, it's managers, it's down to the, to the frontline staff. And, you know, I think, at times people think, well, you know, that's just the latest, greatest idea. This is, you know, these just like talking that talk. And um, I think people, 
came to realize pretty early on that we took ethics seriously. Uh, there's a uh, ethics training requirement. They did, you know, ethics week. They did promos. They, I mean, a ton of things. People who we caught doing bad things, um, you know, were exposed with, you know, fairly large press conferences. But on the flip side, and which I think goes to this evening, uh, was, you know, Amy uh, through the Inspector General's office that we actually, I mean, it's kind of crazy that you have to do this, but I think it's appropriate. Um, <laughs> we started recognizing people who were honest. That sounds a little weird. Um, so, uh, you know, as I say, it takes two to tango. And in public service, that is usually either the public employee being corrupt with a uh, private citizen or a citizen trying to corrupt a public employee. And so, you know, I tried to say to the public, stop trying to corrupt our employees. But, um, you know, everybody didn't get that memo. So, um, you know, you a public employee would have a meeting uh, with someone and they say, well, you know, I have these documents and, you know, I want to explain whatever, whatever. And they would get back to the office. They say, okay, so, you know, take my big manila envelope with the documents. And, you know, they get back to the office and then there was like, you know, $500 in the envelope. And you're like, oh, okay. Well, actually, we found that some of the public employees actually reported that, right? And said, you know, I met with this person. Here's the envelope. Here's the materials and the $500 or whatever it was in the envelope. And, you know, we would chase that, that all down on that part. But, you know, uh, with, with um, Amy's leadership, um, we then started, um, I would write a letter to that public employee, you know, actually, we don't have a signing machine anyway, but I always like to sign stuff, um, signed by the mayor to say, you know, we're aware of a certain incident, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for being an honest employee. We appreciate, you know, what you've done. And, you know, Amy and others have told me that, you know, they would go visit employees from time to time and different offices and that people actually posted these things on their cubicles, that they were proud uh, that they had received this kind of award. Then we had integrity officers in each department. They uh, were public employees who had whatever job they had, but then they took on the additional responsibility and training to be an integrity officer in their department. Um, and they reported to the inspector general. Um, and did not talk to their supervisor or commissioner about the different things that, you know, they may have seen or, or were concerned about. And so I, we tried to infuse it in the government that we're serious about these issues. And, I, you know, I think we, you know, you never, you, you do everything you can, but people are people, and you know they do what they do. So I don't know if you can ever completely eliminate corruption, um, but you can tamp it down, and you can send a message, and you can make it more difficult for people to do the nonsense that they do. And the reality is, most of them really get caught, and for like what? Uh, and I mean, like minuscule yeah. things, and you lose your pension, you possibly go to jail, disgrace you know, yourself, your family, whatever the case may be. And uh, I mean, it, but just some really crazy stuff. I, um, I took this idea from, uh, you remember uh, Dave Letterman had the, like the, he would do the, like the top 10 list on a show. So one year I got the idea um, and I asked Amy, I said, you know, end of the year, give me the top 10 crazy things that people have done and gotten in trouble for. Um, <laughs> and I mean, he's <laughs> so outrageous. So um, in our first year, uh, someone in public property, I love this story, someone in public property who was in charge of city phones, right? So uh, most of the employees got, got phones, right? At the time, Blackberries. Uh, that was, the, you know, was the, that was the thing way back then. Um, this person was in charge of all the phones in public property for all the public employees. This individual started their own friends and family plan and they were giving regular citizens city of Philadelphia phones and charging them monthly. And they would come to their office to pay their bill. <laughs> and, but, and then told people this was a new program 
by Mayor Nutter. <laughs> I'm like, what the? What? So, right, of course they got caught and, you know, got in trouble. Um, there was a guy in, I think, the water department who was over ordering <laughs> copier toner. You know, like the cartridges you get from like Staples? Like massive amounts. And so one reporter said, I don't know what's going on, but FedEx, UPS, <laughs> US Postal Service make a lot of calls to our office. And so they kind of figured out what was going on. This guy was selling copier toner cartridges to a company in Arkansas. $500,000 he wow. ripped off the city. Caught him, indicted, got in trouble, caught the people in Arkansas, and Amy and her team put this new provision in place that um, if you were a public employee and got caught on corruption, they would actually send a letter to the pension board to go after the person's pension as a part of the restitution uh, to the city of Philadelphia. And all of that money was recovered. That's awesome. Uh, uh, we have yeah. to wrap up, but I want to... I want <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> it's like crazy stuff that so, people do. So we have to wrap up, but I want to ask you one final question, which is, um, I think to have, I think integrity comes, there's a direct line between having integrity and having mentorship. Yeah. Uh, and I was with someone last night who's not necessarily at the Phillies game, who was not necessarily a Nutter fan until there, there you got are people to the, like that. Yeah, yeah. Until he, until he mentioned until ethics came up yeah. and he started talking about you had a amazing mentor on city council. Can you talk about that mentor and who uh, and and how your ethics uh, how integrity was was uh, mentored by him? Um, I'm assuming maybe John Anderson. Some of John Anderson. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, my pathway into politics was through uh, the late councilman John Anderson, who um, uh, earlier this month, uh, October third, uh, was 40 years um, that day that he um, that he passed away, and um, he, I mean, brought me into politics. Told me, you know, told me, showed me. And I, and I experienced, uh, but just the highest level of, of ethics and integrity, and I learned so much from him, and I think about him all the time, um, and is directly responsible for me being involved in, in politics. And, you know, I have his um, the first campaign, which I was not around for, I didn't know him at the time, um, but I have one of his campaign posters in my, in my house, on the wall in my office. Um, you know, I, I just try to hold myself to a certain standard. I've made mistakes, I certainly was not perfect, but you know, I would often think about when I had to make tough decisions, you know, basically kind of a different version, like what would John do? Uh, and what's the right thing to do? Um, which may not be politically expedient, may not make people happy, um, might, you know, put you in some hot water, but it was still the right thing to do. And that was, that was, that was my guidepost. That's a, um, that's it a, came from John. That's a perfect uh, way to end this conversation. The right thing to do, because that's what we're honoring people for yeah. tonight, and that's what we want to uh, see in our city government going forward. And thank you so much for your service. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna call. Uh, we're gonna call up our winners and give them their awards. Yesenia Gutierrez wasn't able to be here tonight, but let's give her an applause in her absence. Maria Andreo Geraldo Gajo. Kia Green. This is her 25th year in city government. Two who win? The People's Choice winner this year is Officer Ryan Barksdale, who is everyone's cup of coffee tonight. <laughs> <laughs>